into your brain. And with that, the, as it's processing back into your brain, how, how it controls so many pieces of it. And the easiest ways to describe this is if you've ever had an ear infection and you've walked down a hallway and, and, oh, 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 you're falling, you know, like it's, it's, that ear infection has really affected your balance. Whereas in the same sense, if you covered one eye and went jogging today or went for a walk, you trip over everything. Like even going down one stair, you'll, you'll trip. It's so difficult because your eyes and ears aren't processing the way that you're used to processing. So we started really putting this together in sports, um, specifically my sport of figure skating. And as a master figure skating coach, I've worked with about a half a million athletes uh, worldwide, everything from three-year-olds all the way through Olympians, like what you see on television. I've somehow intercepted their careers at some point in their childhood or medium or throughout getting ready for the Olympics. So my gear is used worldwide. And it's, it's really kind of shocking gear to see when you see it, but it has lots of applications from a slow sense all the way to a really advanced sense of what you'll see from like the Olympics. So over the course of time, I really joke that I was this vestibular genius and I didn't know it. Okay. So from spinning, spinning, turning, turning, balance, 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 turning from the sport of figure skating into how that applied to the general population. And that's where 27,000 articles on PubMed about just the importance of the power of that vestibular system. It really is your main uh, master processing system of your brain. So with that, um, the 27,000 articles and the doctors and the PTs and the OTs that really understood the importance of this vestibular, but we're adding in my training tools. So... This is a peanut butter and jelly project of bringing the two together to see how we can help improve people's balance. The additional concepts that I also bring forward to is that your balance is the master system of your whole brain. And that's what really makes us the humans that we are and not uh, walking on fours or <laughs> being a monkey. <laughs> it's, it's part of that, that, that bipedal balance of being humans that lets us do all these other things. But when your balance is broken, that truly affects your cognitive processing. And that's just something that the whole company is based on. And I always use the example of when I broke my ankle and I was on crutches and I really couldn't balance on the crutches. Boy, I looked at those stairs in my house and was like, I can't do it. <laughs> I just can't do it. Like I was terrified to do the stairs in my crutches because I knew I was gonna fall. And so basically my family had to care for me until I really learned how to use those crutches. People had to feed me. It was so much work to go to the bathroom and back and just to get food. And like my life was so hard from that ankle surgery. It took me so long to heal from it that I really, until I got off those crutches, my life was horrible. So same thing in the struggles of once our balance is affected. And once we've had falls, it really affects our our, our self. <laughs> it really affects our self and how that we can go out and do things and, and our bravery and what activities we're willing to do and how we're not willing to do so many things because our balance is affected. So what I'm going to do is just show a bunch of fun videos and some of them are very extreme and some of them are very basic. So let me just kind of just give you just the whole big rundown. Um, I always like to start with my shocking videos though, because they're shocking. <laughs> It'll make you stay for the other videos. So let me just start with those and then we'll go from there. But I also want to show my balance mat results too, to really show what we're really doing. So um, I'm going to explain the balance mat right now too. And then just kind of as we go throughout it, but our balance mat is a company called Body Tracks, and they come from the golf world and it's called B-O-D-I-T-R-A-K body track and they spell it funny. And um, they're a biometrics mat and they come out of the golf world and they calc and you just stand on it. It's a very simple device. You just stand on it, that's it. And basically we do it 10 seconds with your eyes open and 10 seconds with your eyes closed. And then from there we do my harness and spinner. That's right, there's the spinner. There's the harness right there. Um, we do about five minutes with me on the harness and spinner, wait about one minute to get a little undizzy from it. And then we, we, we retest again. 
So standing balance, 10 seconds, eyes open, 10 seconds, eyes closed. And the results are what we're so excited to show you today. So um, I'll show a couple of examples and then I'll show the body track stuff and then really how we're doing this and in how we think this can really help the whole general public, everything from children with autism to the aging communities to dizzy astronauts coming back from space. So this, this is all the exciting parts of it. So let me start with um, my shocking video because that's always that's always exciting. And it, please excuse my messy desktop here because that's just, this is my life. This is how my brain works, is in a really messy desktop. That's just really kind of says something. So this is one of our famous videos. And this is the one I always shock people with, I think, on um, LinkedIn and on you know some of the social media platforms. Uh, this is one of my athletes. And so you can see the electric spinner. And we just crank on this kid and she's so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. She's turning five and a half turns per second. But this is what like an elite athlete really can do. But she's got a midline cross. So both sides of her brain are active. She's spinning. She's in a harness. She's balanced. She's got, but here she's going to tell you she's not dizzy. This is the shocking part. Ready? Here, hold on. Here it comes. Really impressive. Okay, coming down. And then, of course, the most amazing part to the whole story. Okay, how dizzy are you? Um, I'm not dizzy. Not that dizzy. <laughs> not dizzy at all. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great day from Vestibular Training Services. Oh my goodness, the kid just rolls her eyes. I'm not dizzy. Quit asking me that. You know, <laughs> she's so annoyed with me because I've asked her a hundred times, like, "Are you dizzy?" No, I'm not dizzy. I'm not dizzy. So I always do the thing where you'd assume this would be like one of my top videos and all of my platforms. And the reality is this is my number one video on all of my platforms. And it's my neighbor. And she has terrible, terrible balance. And she uh, is really definitely a fall factor. She's fallen many, many times. And so she came to me to try and help fix her balance. And this is just our, our early sessions with her, but ready? She's just going to make one turn. And this is my number one video on LinkedIn, which just makes me my heart sore because this is who we can see ourselves as being, is she's just going to make one turn. But with this, you have to really look at the science behind what I'm doing with her right now. So she's got to do all the work herself. She's got to balance. She's got to track her feet. So that whole proprioception of knowing where your body is and where your feet are in space so you don't fall, okay? So here, I'm going to play this again. I'm going to play this a couple of times. She's so great. Um, but she has to do the work. And it's not like me putting you on a spinning chair on your butt and me turning you. It's she's standing. And we all know as humans, you learn more when you're standing than when you're sitting. So obviously all the new education information coming out on, especially children, is standing desks are better than sitting desks. So she's, she has to track her feet. She's got to create the balance. It's the vestibular of how her eyes and ears are loading back all of this information. And really it's it's fun it's not scary like there she goes and the interesting thing too is that counterclockwise turning is much easier than clockwise turning it's a whole weird brain thing that i can go over to here in a second but i just want to jump to like some of the the results we're getting like let's talk results so i'm going to start with my mom who is 75 years old and I have a whole thing that she was acting, she'd had several falls and she was acting more like 85 than 75. You know, just, she, she was really, really struggling. So I just wanna go over this, this, just the little metrics here. So she starts out with seven in 10 seconds with her eyes open, 10 inches, or excuse me, seven inches of head sway. So her head is really moving seven inches in 10 seconds. So I, I kind of call her like a little bit of a teeter totter. You know, she's really, um, oh, what were those little child's toys? Um, uh, weeble wobbles, weeble wobbles, but my mom was falling down. Okay. She had 22 inches of foot movement and all of her balance was sitting forward and to her left, a little bit to the back. But of course, which way had all of her falls happened were like basically forward and to the left. So we, we can see how she is definitely a fall risk 
in this. And you can see how many circles out, one, two, three. She's heading to almost four circles of testing out in all of her balance problems. So I'm just gonna slide this over here and then show that was her pretest. And then here's what my mom did with me. And, and I have to go back to, this is very gentle. We're very careful. And I used to think I had to do a ton and I'm totally wrong. This can be a very gentle turning process. And it's something to really look at even as um, you can do this on your own. Like, obviously I have the platform, but this is something you could easily do on your own. So I can control the speed and the direction. And in the end, my mom's gonna do five turns counterclockwise, and then she'll do five clockwise and then five back counterclockwise. So a total of 15 turns is all my mom's gonna do. Not a lot, nothing scary, um, nothing, nothing overwhelming, just gentle, simple turning, and she's done. So we're really done in about five minutes. So we stop in between, we chit chat. Um, I've recently been putting on some different music just for the whole concept of, um, I, I like music therapy. I've talked to a lot of music therapists over the years and they really have interesting research. So I throw on some music that my mom likes and we just, just it's very simple. It's just the five simple turns. So once again, easy. She's got, it's gentle. She turns. Uh, I have a lot of people giggle when they do this. There's, there's a nice little dopamine load of doing this and they enjoy it. I have people that really think this is fun to come work with me, uh, especially in just the short time frame. So once again, fun, easy, five turns. In the end, a total of 15 turns is what she's going to do. So that's all done. Nice and easy. Here's her post test. And I always add to my mom wouldn't do something she didn't want to do. Okay. We're, we're kind of a, we're a really pig headed group here. <laughs> we're only going to do things we want to do. So with this, here's a perfect, so here's her results. So her post test, she drops uh, basically seven inches of head sway in that 10 seconds. So my mom's head becomes very still and stable, which of course is totally tied to her balance. From there, she drops, oh my goodness, 12 inches of foot movement in her feet. And here you can see the red dot is her head. So the blue is where her balance is moving, but you can see her balance comes to center. And this is the exciting project that we have is that in that balance coming to center, she feels better. She feels more balanced. But once as her balance improves, of course, her cognitive improves because her balance is under control. So her brain is moving faster. Uh, my favorite story of this is that, you know, I, I talk about my mom acting like she's she's 75, but she was acting 85. And after she's been working with me, she's acting more like 65. And there's that nice little extra piece of freedom that my mom really feels like. She feels like her brain is more organized and quicker and less spatially disoriented. And so she, even her driving skills, she talks about have really, she feels safer driving now, um, even, even more at night than what she used to because her brain is just moving faster and quicker. So I want to jump to another video that seems like it doesn't apply to us, but it completely applies to us and in balance is one of my former skaters um, flies army helicopters now. She works for the U.S. military and she talks about the danger of flying helicopters is in the last 30 feet where she can't see the ground, especially as the sand is blowing up. So she lands in sandy conditions that she can't see those last 30 feet. So she has to know where they are without being able to see them. And the other thing is she has to be able to feel the movements because if the helicopter, because she has ground force winds and the rotor winds, that if the helicopter tips, that's where they crash it is in the last 30 feet. Um, <laughs> and, and horrific things happen from there, you know, obviously, because uh, you don't really crash a helicopter up here. You crash it in the last 30 feet. So I just have a quick video from her talking about it's that non-spatial disorientation. And she's actually scored number one right now in the U.S. military. <laughs> to the point, the U.S. military accused her of cheating, okay, because she was so good 
they couldn't explain it. And I'm like, well, so obviously she cheated. No, she didn't. She just has really, really good vestibular training when she came in. So let me quick show my lovely Megan video because it's fascinating and, and apply this to you. Whoops, oh, wrong one. Here we go. Um, apply this to not just flying helicopters and aviation, apply this to you and not being dizzy and being aware of what's going on around you. So, so this affects all of us. So being a figure skater, it completely changed my life with aviation. The training I received through years of skating made me basically immune to spatial disorientation. They've put me through every test, every Blarney chair, every spinny apparatus, the spatial disorientation pods, and I cannot get disoriented. I always know where my body is. I always have a sense of where the ground is, how to right myself, and also the mental clarity on how to stay calm. And that all came through skating. It all came through the years of spinning and coming out of a certain position, spinning and with my head in different ways. And it's literally going to save my life as an army aviator. And I feel like vestibular training could save the lives of all aviators because you can train spatial disorientation out of you. You can learn to not get spatially disorientated. It is a learned, practiced skill that is possible. Thank you. Oh, I just love that. Like, isn't she's just so articulate. And you know, and she talks about this Barney chair, like, like every the testing. And this is an example of one of these testing chairs that they use in the military. And I talk about this first boy is about to get kicked out of flight school. Like, oh my goodness, I don't want him to fly my helicopter. You know, we're that that would be terrifying because this kid gets really spatially disoriented. And then when you look at how they test Megan, same test, you can see that she really, she's so good at this. They just keep retesting her over and over again, but ready? Uh, of course, watch her pop up with, of course, no problems. Ready? Ta-da. So yes, you can see why she is the winner of the U.S. military right now. Ready? Compared to this guy. <laughs> And that's what we're talking about. Like, like, isn't that shocking? Like I watched that and I'm like, oh goodness, this, this poor boy is about to get kicked out of flight school. Um, whereas Megan has just thrived and, and done so well with it. So, so these are the projects I'm working on. The one other little piece that I love to bring up is the fact of all the groups in balance and brain that won't work together, that I've kind of turned into this little center point of all the groups that won't work together. So I'm in the center. And I'm doing a small project right now with NASA, a very, very, very small teeny weeny project with NASA on dizzy astronauts and helping them when they return from space for more than three months and really helping reset that vestibular system. But, but NASA want, doesn't want really anything to do with my autism group. I'm working with a lot of children with autism and really trying to reset that vestibular and help them cognitively. And it's very, very wonderful work. My goodness, my life is fantastic working with these children with autism. But that group wants nothing to do with the sports group or the um, post-concussion group, you know? So I've been working with some NFL alumni specific to... Um, uh, football, NFL football. Um, I also have to remind myself, am I in Europe? Are we talking about soccer or are we talking about football? It's two, two different. <laughs> it's the same thing in both places, but it's not. So um, I've been working with a lot of um, post-concussion NFL players. And I think it's really shocking because we used to think football players, they had maybe a bad back or a bad ACL. And it was the cost of playing professional sports. And that's that's not the cost. The cost is really... Um, brain injuries, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brain injuries. And it's really shocking to see these, these men as they're starting to age. It really uh, is a travesty that we have to really solve um, for professional sports, especially even now coming out on soccer. Um, I have a whole thing on soccer could change its rules. Maybe you can just bat the ball down with your left hand, quit using your head. Like it's a game, we write the rules, we can change the rules. Uh, because really it's it's shocking to see the results coming back, even from young children playing soccer and the head injuries that, that could easily be solved that 
we as a society could solve and not change the speed of the game and still make it still a great sport. Um, the other groups, <laughs> so I talk about NASA doesn't work with autism and autism doesn't work with pro sports and pro sports does, you know, and post concussion. Uh, it, these are all pieces that I'm trying to be the center of now and I'm working with all of them. So uh, we've even been doing some work with, uh, of course, um, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, we're in early processes of working with them. And in addition, um, depression, you know, in uh, that will be really more important work that we're really looking forward to participating in. Uh, we've also just started, just started with the US military. Once again, post concussion work and cognitive speed. But I talk about they have to be our worst clients we've ever had. <laughs> the US military. Oh, goodness, it's, it's a it's a tough group to deal with and, and crazy meetings like so. So this is our project and the concept of spinning that spinning really, um, one of my young 10 year old athletes told the story best. And I, I think that the genius of 10 year olds of why does this work? You know, we don't understand why this works. But the best part is, she described it best that the um, everything spins, the, the universe spins, the earth spins, the earth spins around the sun, our blood spins, the smallest atoms spin, everything spins. So when we spin, we become part of our world and our brain really connects with the world around us. And I don't know if my 10 year old is right, but it certainly seems like she is <laughs> the genius of 10 year olds, but she was my LinkedIn quote for the week that week. <laughs> Spinning makes you part of your world around you, but really just one turn, a gentle turn is, is really starts the process. And it, um, and if you can cross your hands to get both sides of your brain active, that's even better. So even just standing with your hands crossed and making one turn, that's, that's it, that, that's it. And to start there uh, is, is the whole process. Uh, although I have one interesting odd factor about which direction to turn and, and there's two answers to it. And people count their steps, which I find interesting that you can count your steps of how many steps does it take to make one full turn counterclockwise? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, what about going clockwise? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So that clockwise direction just seems a little harder for people. And really what we think the answer is, is based not on your left or right handedness, but on which ear is most dominant. And the way to calculate which is your dominant ear is you just lean into me and I have a secret. So I have a secret. Let me tell you what my secret is. So you lean in and which ear did you lean in with is your dominant ear. So for me, for sure, it's my right ear. Whereas I would, I wouldn't lean in with my left ear if I, you know, <laughs> which I find fascinating. So really it's based on your dominant ear makes the direction easier to turn. Although to add to the story, I've worked with half a million young children and athletes and so in 99.5% of all the world and Olympic skaters, they all turn counterclockwise. There's only about five really good clockwise rotators. Those, those children just don't develop into top, top elite athletes. So the interesting fact is, so we started messing with this, of course, 10 years ago. I mean, here's me, I'm going to mess with this. So approximately 17% of children present as wanting to go clockwise. Um, and really what we found is they weren't so much left or right handed or even left or right eared. They're just dyslexic. Dyslexic kids just got turned around in class. So where everyone went this way, they went this way. So what we did is we forced them to go back counterclockwise. We, we forced them to come back on the rotation this way. And we tested it on five, six and seven year olds. And over the course of a year and a half of really forcing them to keep turning this counterclockwise direction, which didn't feel natural to them, it, it forced them to move on almost an unnatural way that they didn't like, but we made them do it um, a year and a half later. So they're now six, seven and eight year olds. 
None of them presented as dyslexic anymore. They all became better readers. And they were also that whole 17% of kids were really struggling in reading and in school and life was hard. And, you know, um, they really turned into becoming really wonderful students. They, they didn't struggle to read. Um, so we really feel that when you tie a vestibular program to like a reading program, it's a better program. You tie five minutes of vestibular to a physical therapy program, it's, it's a better program. You do five minutes of vestibular and a yoga class, you know, it, it's a better, it's a better program. And so these are the kind of projects that I've been doing for 30 years <laughs> and are just really kind of coming together as we put it all together with, with the harness and the spinner and the vestibular system. And I, this is, this has been our project. So my challenge to everyone, of course, is we could spin a little more and what that would do for our balance. But once again, that cognitive processing that goes with it. Um, you've all sat here so quietly muted on Zoom. It just seems so, so politely weird to me. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I feel like the chat little section should just be full of like a hundred little questions that I'm more than happy to answer. So, and I, I just, I, yes, well, please. Okay. I have a question. Um, so, um, and, and this is just, and I, I'm sorry I missed part of this because I was on another call, um, but I was really fascinated by, by this aspect of um, the vestibular uh, increasing the cognitive, uh, uh, especially for older adults, uh, abilities. And so, but here's my question. If a person was extremely active as a gymnast. So you know that that's spinning both ways and all over the place, flipping, yeah. Um, if they were that way as a kid, um, and then of course they age, would that um, help them in later life? Or like, let's say they're no longer spinning, obviously, because they're older and they don't want to fall. Um, but what's your take on, you know, early, um, early activity in the brain. Okay. So I'm so glad you asked this. This is such a wonderful question. So, okay. So I started asking thousands of people, like total strangers on the street. I started asking everyone about the time they did a perfect movement, like the perfect jump, the perfect spin, the perfect balance on their sailboat, the perfect, just tell me about the time you did something perfectly, a perfect movement. And Everyone, including five-year-olds, had an answer for me. Every single person did. From the time they moved perfectly on their horse or on the beam for gymnastics or for tennis or the perfect slap shot over the goalie's left shoulder. And they could all tell the story vividly, like, like what it smelled like, who was there, who saw it, who didn't see it. You know, the lighting over here, the wording on the boards. They, they had a vivid, vivid memory of this perfect really what they had was perfect balance. And what they really had was a perfect axis. So like their body was perfectly in line for what they were doing. So I started interviewing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people about this. It was thousands. Okay. Like so many people, I just stopped total strangers on the street. And the funny thing is even like the five-year-olds who in my mind had never done a perfect jump could tell me about a perfect jump, you know, and they, they talked about it was even like slow motion. And I feel like when I have people do my project and, and spin and turn and balance and kind of work on that vestibular system, they describe it as very similar emotions almost of having done it. They talk about, it felt great. I feel better. I'm more alert. They, they, they told the story almost as that perfect movement that, that we could recreate without flipping them. Do you know what I mean? Like a gymnast anymore or balancing them on a sailboat. I could almost recreate the same feeling that their brains loved. I have, I, I actually have people tell me that they're, they're almost addicted to my gear. They love doing it. It's that five minutes, two times a week, maybe three times a week. If they could do it four times a week, they like to do it five times a week. It was fun. They want to do it seven times a week because it is, it's, it's really fun. There is a dopamine load to it also. Like everyone talks about it's, it's fun. Like, like they enjoy it. So I, I do get, I had, 
I had over 20 doctors worldwide contact me during the Olympics for the summer with Simone Biles and, and the twisties that she felt like she couldn't find her balance point. And I had 20 doctors from around the world contact me and be like, hey, can you help Simone? We could fly your gear in like right now. And they were trying to figure out how to get my gear, you know, to the Olympics just so that to help her. You know what I mean? For that exact reason. So if anyone has any contacts into Simone Biles, I'd love to help her. <laughs> I don't know her. I just don't know her. <laughs> so uh, uh, if I may, um, I have a question. I guess at some point you're going to tell us how this is accessible for us. Um, I'm a retired physical therapist. I do a fitness class for, for seniors and um, I integrate as much balance work as I can. Uh, and lately I've been focusing a lot on foot mobility and conditioning uh, and have noticed even for, in myself a tremendous difference. Um, I'm guessing that I can add, as long as people are safe, because a lot of them are virtual, um, I can add the turning. Um, mm -hmm. Never thought of it before, but um, any other thoughts you have for us who are working with the virtual uh, mm -hmm. clients? Absolutely. And the one extra advanced movement, you know, like when we talk, oh, like I got this figured out and, and taking a couple of turns. But the other extra trick to it is doing it with your feet crossed too. And it's a little bit more of a, it's a little shuffleier because I just have my feet crossed and I'm just kind of standing on both feet at the same time, you know, is, you know, so I did it with both feet, but with my feet crossed too. So I got the feet crossed and the hands crossed. And Can you then, do that? Can you do that? But put the screen down. Screw, I, I thought about that after I, I didn't quite we couldn't see your feet at all. Can you see my feet? Yeah, there we go. So I'm just crossing it. Each time my feet crossed, and I, it's a little bit more of a shuffle your turn. Okay. And I can go the other way too. Oh, that's harder. <laughs> but with my feet crossed, once again, I'm using both sides of my brain. You know, it's that midline cross. So anytime you can do a midline cross of anything, that's always more active for your brain and connecting both sides of your brain. I'll put your mic back on. I can't. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> there you go. that's Thanks. great. And the one thing I will add to any of my virtual people or virtual attendees is to do it in a doorway because mm -hmm. in the doorway, you've got the uh, you've got the good uh, potential support if you need it without changing your body alignment. And by the way, I teach people their ABCs. I teach them to align, breathe, and center, and then add this stuff. So this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. It's so fun. So when you ask about accessibility, okay, this is the part of the game that's a little harder for us. Um, I joke that we're not a startup. We have product. We're ready to ship. Like, like we're not a startup. We've been doing this for 30 years. For 30 years, I've been working with athletes. So this gear is absolutely available worldwide. I can ship tomorrow, you know, easy enough to do. It's not cheap <laughs> because of course of insurance and it's gear and it's electrical and it's plugins and it's all kinds of things. I do have the price down to $9,995. But with that, I really put through 50 people a day. Like, like, so, okay. So break out my calculator here, 50 people a day. And you're going to love, I charge 10 bucks. Okay. 10 bucks. So like people just hop on it for 10 bucks. They're in, they're out. It's nice and easy. So really um, like a community center could easily put 50 people through. And the other piece to it too, um, because of the triple pulley system, I'm so short. I'm four foot 10. Okay. I'm not even five feet tall. I sound like a hamster. Okay. Like I'm a, <laughs> I sound like a squirrel. Um, and so I'm, I'm four foot 10, but I had no problem controlling my 250 pound patent attorney on the gear. Like, so it, it's very, so I have 12 year olds that can run this gear. And of course it comes with training for sure. It comes with training. We have the training, we have the gear, we have the shipping, we have all of that, but really at even $10 and 50 people a day times five days a week, you know, 2,500 you could make times a month. In one month, it would more than pay for the gear. Okay, so so it is a nice little investment that we could easily add to community centers. Uh, I'm actually working on a 
project, you're going to love this. One of my vendors has connections to a group um, that just spent $6 billion buying senior housing locations. I'm not going to say the company's name, but if you Google it, you can probably figure it out. Okay. And their whole goal is to make it more connective um, is what their background is, is in connectivity so that you can track down your grandma and your mom and your auntie, you know, easily. Um, but they also are putting in into their platform is hopefully my gear uh, and doctors and PTs and OTs and creating more of a community center opportunity within senior housing so that more people will use the building and the space and so that more people can connect and not have the isolationism that, that we really saw during COVID. So um, oh, Sheila, we need your website and contact oh, information. So the website is, uh, it's the easiest way to get there is spinyourbrain.com. Okay, so I'll even type this in here. So it's really easy. Spinyourbrain.com. Ooh, look at that. Do you, um, have, do you have videos that show exactly how the equipment works? Absolutely. Um, and we also have a great PowerPoint presentation that you can, I can email you also. That's easy yeah. enough to do too. And it yeah. shows everything about like how to put the body harness on, how to get the Velcro tight, how to step up, how to be safe about it. Um, it's, we've got it all PowerPointed out. It's, it's a PowerPoint, you know. I also have thousands of videos all over from Facebook to Instagram to LinkedIn. And I invite you, I don't know if you're on LinkedIn, love LinkedIn, but that's where I've connected with the doctors and the teachers and, you know, NASA and the NFL and all of those. So I have tons of great videos um, under our main company name, which is Vestibular Training Services, which I joke, we have the worst, um, we have the worst marketing guy ever because you have to be able to spell vestibular. <laughs> worst marketing guy ever. So Vestibular Training Services, but the easiest way to get there is spinyourbrain.com. And that's got all the links also to my email that, you know, I'm happy to email and chat and, and talk through this and present at more events. Um, we really want our gear in, we half our sales go into people's homes, which is great because all it really takes is an eye bolt. And we even provide the eye bolt. So it, all it takes is a handyman to install the eye bolt. And then of course, then there's the, the pulleys. And then of course there's, there's the electric spinner. And I just slide mine on a yoga mat uh, the gear is portable to some extent, but it's just kind of a hassle. It's a 42 pound spinner and you got to be able to get up to the ceiling level to hook the locking carabiner. So it is a little bit of a hassle. I don't like moving mine around, but I move it around all over the world. You know, so it's movable. It's just a hassle though. So like if it could be installed more permanently, it just save you the hassle. But yes, we'd like to get into community centers. We'd like to get into senior housing places. We love to work with PTs because then they can help hundreds of people um, besides just the people in your house, which is great. That's great too. But I really want to help lots of people, which is really the goal. Sheila, um, have you ever been inside uh, an audiology or ENT uh, center where they're actually doing the vestibular um, assessments? Mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. they, they have a machine and you go into the machine and it spins you around and all that. So is this similar to that? You know, yes, there's, there's lots of different vestibular scenarios out there. Another one is this flipping NASA chair. That's yeah. a half a million yeah. dollars. Holy. Yeah. That looks terrifying. That <laughs> yeah. That's a half a million dollars. Yeah. No, I, I've seen it. I don't even want to do it. <laughs> looks terrifying. Uh, my gear is way more gentle, you know, and, and that's the other piece to it too, is that it is something that the whole community can really assess. Although I want to add in one part of our total failure. Our total failure piece is if you have a really, really frail rib cage. Um, and, and I think of my great grandma Harriet, you know, like, uh, oh yeah, no, for sure. That's not going to work because the body harness is tight to the body. And if she fell off, I'd be concerned that her ribs would break. Okay. So, so there's a whole group that once they're frail and how I define frail is if you really can't roll around on a bed or on the floor, 
you know, then, then you're frail. Okay. And then that this isn't the product for you anymore. And that there's other vestibular scenarios out there that could still help you, but it, it wouldn't be mine. So, so safety wise, cause I work, I'm a gerontologist that works with seniors. So safety wise, um, how would you, uh, you know, how do you go about screening the seniors? I mean, do you take a health uh, assessment first? Mm -hmm. you get their medical records. How do you do it? Because you know, so it, okay. I, I, you're going to laugh. I'm, I, I'm a little bit more junior. I'll just look at their balance. You know, can they make one turn on the floor, you know? And um, there's several people that can't do that. They can't, they can't make one turn on the floor. And so that, that'd be a group that I think is probably past what I can do. The other one piece you can do to add safety to this is you can build a platform around it. So they take a ramp up or a step up 10 feet back, walk to the spinner, put the harness system on, then step on the spinner, so that it's just more of a flatter surface and a little bit more ground leveling than mine right now that you just step up to. Like, so in my example, that you put on the harness first, you step up, you do the vestibular, you step down, then you take the body harness off. You know, so those, those are little pieces that we can add to the extra safety of it. Uh, it seems like you could also have like, um, uh like a walker or just something bars that surround it, you still have room uh, to spin and yet you've got the, the extra support if necessary. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's something that we can totally have engineered. I don't have that, but I could get that engineered. That wouldn't be hard, you know, absolutely. Just as extra little handholds along the way, absolutely. Is there any research, you know, backing the effects of the, the, the training? So two, two answers to this. Yes and yes and kind of. Okay, so uh, there's the 27,000 articles on PubMed that we're applying. Also on our website too under resources, specifically rotational things and vestibular where they tracked slack liners, figure skaters, dancers, other people in this cognitive testing that had superior results. So that's also on our website. We also have a PhD research coordinator that's joined our staff that's handling right now, we have 10 to 14 research projects around the world in different phases going through that Dr. Erica Olson is in charge of. Um, and I just piled it off onto her because that's her job. Uh, and we also have on our staff, Dr. Daniel O'Brien, who you maybe heard from ABC News, who's our chief medical officer. Uh, Dr. O'Brien uh, is a MD, PhD, MBA, <laughs> and he, uh, he speaks on medical innovation um, for ABC News and a lot of the national groups for innovation in medicine, who found me on LinkedIn, loved the project, and uh, joined our staff. So the answer is yes. <laughs> we do have a lot of support for it, you know, especially in the industry. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Do you do any work with Dr. Amen, Daniel Amen? I, I don't know, Dr. Uh, I know he, the name. Yeah, he does a lot with brain. I mean, that's his thing. Mm -hmm. He has a million books on brain, you know, training the brain, and he works with NFL, uh, um, former NFL athletes also. Oh, nice. Um, I, I don't know Dr. Amen directly, but uh, we are meeting actually next week with Dr. Sills who is the head doctor for the NFL. And we also, um, I'm sure, I'm sure if you saw the, the Will Smith movie concussion with Dr. Bennett Amalu, who discovered CTE, um, Dr. Amalu follows me on LinkedIn. <laughs> I was so excited when that came and my family didn't care. And I'm like, no, 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 this is huge. Dr. Bennett Amalu follows me on LinkedIn. So that's very exciting news. Um, the other cool thing is uh, Bo Jackson. Do you remember Bo Nose from Nike ads back in the 80s? Bo Jackson follows me too. <laughs> and I'm like, my family didn't care. And I was like, this is the best. And my family did not care. <laughs> 
so much fun. But I would love to be, if anyone has any introductions to additional neuroscientists and doctors, for sure, please send them my way. I would love to meet more. I, I, just, I would love to meet more. Oh, you're being so easy on me. Jeez. <laughs> This has been great. Thank you. It's such an interesting topic and one that we've never really addressed before in our group. So, so um, I appreciate that. I just love this. One more little final thought that I want to add to, because I get the question all the time too, but how long does this really last? And the answer we really feel like is three days on most people. It's about three days. So most people do this two or three times a week, but at the magic six to eight week window is when it really sticks. Okay really, really, really sticks. And that's um, what we're excited about. And really, when I talk to different PTs and OTs and doctors, the, the six to eight week window is where magic happens in humans, whether it's an ACL or a back surgery or a hip surgery, the six to eight week window is really normal in humans. Uh, I was compared to, a, I went for a jog one time and I lost a hundred pounds. Yeah, no, no, that's not how humans work. You know, <laughs> I did something once and it lasted forever. And that's just not how it works. It really, it, it's the consistency of it. But what we do really love is that we were talking about five minutes. It's, um, and I had a couple of marketing guys come forward. They're like, well, we could add a nutrition program to it and we could do this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It, th that's the whole point. It's just five minutes a couple of gentle spins, change directions. It's a little harder on that clockwise side, but that's a good brain challenge. And then back to counterclockwise. And that that's just kind of the whole point is that it, it's easy, it's gentle. And once again, you don't have to crank on it. Like you don't have to get to the point of nausea. Like I kind of thought you had to at the beginning, I'd crank on the kids really hard thinking it was helping them and it wasn't necessary. It really wasn't. Yeah, gentle turning, will still have excellent results. So once they reach that eight, eight week point, do you have like a maintenance routine that you do mm -hmm. instead of three times a week? How often would that be? Just once a week, once a week. you know, gentle. And I've had people take a couple months off and then come back to it. And, and it's interesting when they come back to it. Um, so of course, my whole family's been tested. They they're sick of being my guinea pigs. But my favorite was my husband who had a major car accident, a major traumatic brain injury. It was really, it was really terrifying. Uh, when he finally got back to doing this, at first it took 14 seconds. He was so dizzy for 14 seconds, even with gentle spinning. And then it, the next day it dropped down to 10 seconds. And we're like, oh, that's great. Day three, he was down to two seconds. You know, like, like so to go from that 14 seconds to 10 seconds to two seconds, I, even I was amazed by, and even he was too, but his brain just started to adjust. And that's that neuroplasticity that we talk about. Like in the olden days, I remember as a kid being told, well, your brain's your brain and that's all you're stuck with. And that's not true. We totally know that's not the case. The new neuroplasticity, your brain is constantly changing, um, even by the minute they talk about. So with that, you, you really can retrain the brain um, in lots of ways. And this is just another example of it, but so it, I'm sorry. Will this, will this retrain us to be able to ice skate again? Yes. yes. No, 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 I have no idea. <laughs> yes. Come skating with us. Oh, slippery surfaces. Oh, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I can always tell like, like, but like I weirdly, I still, even at 53 have really good balance. Like I still skate with the kids and I still, you know, can skate with my, juvenile and intermediate novice ladies. And um, I, I can keep up with them even on, on ice harness systems, you know, even with some of my senior ladies that, wow, I, I just I, I think it's that constant spinning that's really helped my balance all these years, you know, even after the foot surgery and the foot surgery and the foot surgery and the foot surgery and the knee surgery and the, you know, <laughs> all of that and the two kids, you know, so. Um, going, back it, to, going back to the first question I asked, which is, so if a person does it when they're young, uh, do they lose it? No, I think it just, it comes back, but it comes back quicker than those that never did it. You know, it really, it'll come back in two, three, four tries, you know, not 12 tries. You know, they just learn it. They just learn it back faster. And they're, cause they're, it really, it goes back into their natural skills that, that have already been trained in the system. Um, but they pick it up way faster and then they retain it faster and longer 
They really do. Um, my former athletes all pick this up and, and it really sticks very easily. My non-athletes, although it's interesting, I have a group of ladies that are really good piano players and they picked it up really fast too. But I think that they were good at crossing the midline and they had very active brains from the piano. Um, but I'm fascinated how fast even the children with autism learn it and keep it. You know, they, they learn it very quickly, which impressed me at how fast they could learn it. Well, this is great. Thank you so much, Sheila. I really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions that come up later, um, you can send them to me. I'll pass them to Sheila. Or if you want to put your um, email in the chat box real quick, unless you did already, um, I'll make sure that everyone gets that. This is uh, going to be housed on our YouTube site and I'll send you the link for that. Um, also, could you, could you send us the PowerPoint, like you said? It's a huge document. So I send it on, we send it, uh, or we transfer.com just bounce me a bunch of everyone's emails and then I'll just send it, but it, then you get a transfer link and then you download the transfer link. Cause it's like 127 megabyte PowerPoint here. Let me just write these down. You know here. what, uh, Sheila, I'll just send you the link of everyone that registered. Thank to you. So you don't have to write down all 10 of our got it. addresses real quick. So thank yeah, you. perfect. We'll send that out. And thanks everyone for, for coming. Thank we hope you. to see you again, Sheila. It was really thank you. I want to change the world. I want to change the world. So I let's help you. <laughs> we do too. Let's do this together. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Everyone. Thank you.